surprised It's a long way back from Austin, I'm just telling you. Isn't there, Kathy? Let's be in prayer for Pam and Jerome Smith. Pam is going to be spending some time in St. Louis transitioning her mother to a new environment. <coughs> Those of you who've been through it know a lot of memories go on and a lot of things come to mind. So you go with our prayers. We continue this morning with the study of Max Mercado's book, The Great House of God. As you recall, we've been in several rooms in God's great house. We've been in the living room. We've seen the foundation. We've been in the observatory. We've been in the chapel. been before the throne, we've been in the study, been in the furnace. Last Sunday we went in the kitchen. But today we're going to talk about something that we don't often think of. Max begins this little vignette with a story of a phrase that's used by many financial institutions and it doesn't always bring good news. It's captioned insufficient funds. <laughs> I've seen that before. <laughs> and there's a penalty usually. I love going in different places. They said please know that there'll be a $30 fine or penalty for if your check is returned for insufficient funds. And I smile at that these days because I gave him a credit card. <laughs> but I want to remind you of something. In our spiritual walk, there's no such thing as insufficient funds. That's a bank account. Our account is in heaven. And our account, our debt, has been paid in full. Max tells the story in beginning this lesson of the great house of God. And this should apply to one person in this room particularly well because he's a roof expert. <laughs> And today we're going to talk about the roof. Not the one that Bob Drummond built for Helen and me, but the roof of grace that God provided to us as his children through the death and resurrection of his son. Because you see, by that great gift, we have grace to live because of our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, God's only Son. <coughs> in God's house, you're covered by the roof of grace. The roof of a house is seldom noticed. How often do your guests enter your doorway saying, you have one of the finest roofs I've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> they don't say it, do they, Bob? <laughs> but such disregard is no fault of the builder. He and his crew labored for hours, balancing beams and nailing shingles. Yet in spite of their efforts, most people would notice a $2 lamp before they would notice the roof. <laughs> Let's not make the same mistake. As God covered his guest house, he spared no expense. In fact, his roof was the most costly section of this structure. It cost him the life of his only son. He invites us to study, to study his work by virtue of three words in the center of the prayer that his son taught his disciples to say, forgive our debts. 
You ever think about that much? That through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and through your trust and my trust in Him, all of our transgressions are forgiven. That's grace. Now, if we try to explain that to an unbeliever, it's almost like talking to a tree. Because they would look up and say, isn't that cheap grace? No, no. We as believers know that it's the costliest gift the world has ever known. Because on that day, when Jesus set His face steadfastly toward Jerusalem, he knew what he was going to do. And he knew that nothing could stop him. Yet in his humanness in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, Father, let this cup pass from me. But his divine love was shown in those next words. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be. And he went and endured the most awful humiliation the world had ever known. <laughs> Yet in the strength that he summoned at the very last, he showed that great incredible love when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And therein began the great gift of grace. I wish I could recall that Greek word is in here somewhere, but it starts with a T, and it's a Greek word that has something to do with payment. When Jesus said it is finished, what it meant was the debt has been paid in full. He paid that for us. He paid the ultimate price because of His great love for us that we might be reconciled to His Holy Father and to Him regardless of what we've done. Isn't that incredible? Do you ever think about it? For some reason, I guess it's age and perhaps it's growing in my journey, but sometimes I look back on my life and I think of some awful things that I did that I'm just, I'm ashamed of. Why in the world would I do it? And then I'm reminded, Father, if I didn't ask for forgiveness for that, then I ask Thee now, and I move on. That's what we do as children of God. We're not perfect, we're sinners. That's what the Scripture says. Christ died for us though we were sinners and are sinners. He took the great love of His Father and He took every sin that we would ever commit as mankind and took it on Himself and died on the cross to save us from those and the slate is wiped clean. I remember, baby help me if I mix up this thing, you know I embellish. <laughs> Don't lie, I embellish. Don't it, Jerry? <laughs> Fella dies and he goes to heaven. St. Peter meets him at the gate. He says, What do I have to do to get in here? He said, You've got to have a thousand points. He said, Well, I read my Bible almost every day. He said, That's a half a point. <laughs> said I went to church and about every Sunday said that's another half a point said I hadn't really committed any bad acts he said that's another half a point he said St. Peter the only way I'm going to get in here is by the grace of God he said that's worth a thousand points <laughs> <laughs> but you know, as funny as that little story is, it's absolutely true. We can't earn our way there. It's not that we can't, 
We know we can't. But the key is we don't have to. Jesus said very simply, and this drives an unbeliever crazy, and sometimes people who call themselves believers. He said, and it's in the New Testament, if Jesus' words are in red, it says very clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. How much plainer could he make it? And aren't you glad that you trust him as your Savior? Not in your own goodness, but we trust him in our brokenness, our own ineptness, our own failures and our own fears. He's the one upon whom we can rest our entire being because he overcame the world. Remember what he said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And he did. I've been listening to some of my southern gospel music, trying to figure out which is the next one I'm going to play. So I'm going to run a couple of stanzas by you this morning. <laughs> Do you want me to cut the camera off? <laughs> As you know, I'm camera shy. <laughs> Just kidding about the singing. <laughs> but there's, there's a song, I think it's the Booth Brothers sing. What a glorious day that will be when we all get to heaven. You ever thought about that? What a glorious day that will be when we all get to heaven. You see, at that point, we won't have to have that faith that we live without seeing. For that day, we shall see Him as He is. And we'll know Him. That's why it's so important for us in the life of a believer to trust in His amazing grace. We didn't earn it. We couldn't do anything to earn it. He freely gave it. I love the statement that Max makes in one of his books. The only thing more amazing about grace is our own stubborn unwillingness to accept it. Think about it. All we have to do is to trust and obey. We got to the early service this morning. We found out this morning that our two of our little grandsons were, were in the fourth grade and they were going to receive their Bibles. I hadn't thought about how special that would be until they called out their name. Cyrus York Craig the Fourth. I didn't laugh. Papa started crying. You saw me. John Campassi Wise. Then I thought to myself how important that is that they are being given the Holy Scriptures. And I hope that at some point they will see something in there where they come to Snooks and Poppy say, Snooks and Poppy, I don't understand this right here. And then I can introduce him to the Believer's Bible commentary and we can walk through it. But you see, in the Old Testament, God wanted His children to understand His precepts. He wanted them to understand His Word. He said, put it on your forehead. Put it on the doorpost of your heart. Put it on your mantle. The Holy Scripture, man, is so important for us to cling to, to hold on to steadfastly in our walk with our Savior. You know, sometimes we get caught up in, well, I need to do this and I need to do that, and I've just, I've got, we don't have to do anything. <clears throat> 
only thing we got to do is trust Him. And He'll tug at our heartstrings <coughs> to lead us to paths that He would have us take. He'll, well that's in the Scripture too, be a light unto my path. Man. It's all written down right here to trust Him. From Genesis to Revelation. Every word in it is true. It wasn't written then to be a guideline for them. It was written then and inspired by the holy breath of God to be the lamp unto our feet. To trust Him according to His grace, which is sufficient. That's in here too. He said it. My grace is sufficient for you. Do you believe it? Of course you do. If you didn't believe it, you'd be home in a nice warm bed. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, now I'm found. I once was blind and now I see. You know the story behind that song? Written by John Newton? Is that who it was, Don? He was a slave ship captain, beating the people on his ship till God changed his life with the amazing grace that only our Heavenly Father can give. Aren't you glad that you got a thousand points <laughs> and it's not going to change? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Let's pray. Father, forgive us for trying to make the gospel so complicated. Forgive us for doubting those precious words that are written there, my grace is sufficient for thee. Help us to trust them in our walk and in our journey of faith, Father. Strengthen our belief and trust in those words. Thank you, Father, for the, from the depths of our soul for the precious gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Father, move in a powerful way within our lives that we might hold steadfastly to the truths of thy Holy Scripture, that we might build upon our faith, we might share our love for Christ, and that we might reach out to those who might need a helping hand. Father, we have some people who are close to us who are hurting meet their needs in a way that only you can provide. Bring comfort, strength, and healing to those who need it. Guide us as we show your love and compassion for your children. Move our hearts in a powerful way that we might put behind us the sins that would darken our lives and look forward with forgiveness for our sins and for the saving grace that Jesus, your Son, provides for those who trust Him. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much. In Jesus' name.